Welcome in, everybody. It is a beautiful Wednesday afternoon here in Memphis, Tennessee. And speaking of Tennessee, we are talking to Ellie Williamson. How are you doing, Ellie? I'm doing good. How are you? Absolutely ecstatic. You know, baseball is in full swing. Softball is in full swing. Just got to talk to Carlin Pickens yesterday about some Tennessee softball, but now I get to talk Tennessee baseball with you here today. You know, let's recap what took place this past weekend at Globe Life, you know, Shriners. Let's talk about that first. You know, talk to me because I know you actually really dove in deep about the whole idea of what they're actually doing from a, um, you know, nonprofit, you know, charitable cause thing. Talk about just how nice that was seeing what they were able to do for Shriners. Yeah, college baseball deserves the pageantry at this point. Like, I love that a team, honestly, like UNC, can kind of beat the number one team in the sport. And then the next day, it's a whole new game. Um, but yeah, back with the Shriners um, Classic this weekend, Flow Baseball did a great job giving the sport a platform for viewers and for fans. And just everyone was so professional and wonderful there. So, you know, I'll have to say, you know, some people that we don't appreciate enough are the SIDs and they're working overtime to make sure information is out there. The team is handled correctly. Communications is definitely not an easy job, but it's high stress, no errors. So I met some amazing SIDs this weekend and I always respect, you know, Sean Burroughs at Tennessee and not just because I go to Tennessee, but <laughs> because he's just been patient to help me so much. So I think it kind of says a lot about him as a person um, to do what he does and just, you know, be good at it and, nice at the same time you know, Tennessee is very lucky to have him Baylor's SID though Oklahoma Oregon so many good people I got to meet and I loved all of that but you know like I said before respect the game because it will humble you at any moment and we saw that opening weekend <laughs> uh yeah dressing up for the game and respecting the time and to work at an event like that is just so special to me and you know I love honoring the game and the players and that's that's called growing the game and you know why I like coming in and talking with you but it was the stadium just you know I don't think we can kind of talk about Shriners with like enough like it is I met the head of that initiative and he was telling me all about NASCAR and the other events that they do like the Shrine Bowl that I've worked at before and so I really love just seeing the patient stories and, you know, all weekend and seeing them on the field, interacting with the guys and, you know, they go back to more surgeries um, and that money that was raised goes to kind of help them. And just to know that they had a minute of joy and peace is worth the trip for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, shout out to everyone involved and, you know, I'll be there this upcoming weekend covering Arkansas and Oregon state as well as Oklahoma State, got guests from all of them, but predominantly Arkansas. So pretty excited to go there. It was awesome last year. Saw everything that y'all got to experience this week. But let's get into the baseball side of it. I was absolutely ecstatic for Tennessee. The second I saw Blake Burt pictures and him getting off the plane with the daddy coat over the shoulder, probably the best content the day before college baseball um, that you can find. But, you know, Tennessee comes out and makes a statement against a top 25 Texas Tech team, but the story has got to be A.J. Causey. Talk to me about just how amazing he looked in that opening performance. Well, you know, I I mentioned A.J. Causey earlier in our first episode that we did because, I mean, he was – and Marcus Phillips was another guy that came in too there. But, yeah, there were nine games in three days, and sh getting to share that part of it with Twitter – like I love Vol Nation Twitter and you can, you know, it's a little hectic at sometimes you can say what you want, but I think, you know, I tweeted a vid video of AJ Causey and that's kind of, it really blew up right there. And so just kind of showed off his, his arm talent, him coming in first game, you know, he's coming from Jacksonville state. And so you know, we actually have him coming onto our show this weekend um, for an episode. So with Riley Green, which is really exciting. But, you know, it's a surprise show that we have coming. So he was everything you could have imagined. AJ Russell. Um, I mean, you can't say if you see my dog peeping up right here, just 
<laughs> he's kind of getting right into it. Hey, you know, we welcome all guests. Oh, we we we've had, we said had some guys that kind of resemble dogs. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Chris Stamos, another one of those guys, a dog. You know, that's kind of what Tony V has said. You know, we don't have set starters yet. Um, and we won't, but he had some arms that were ready and he said, we might use, you know, a guy for an out and, you know, switch it up. And he did exactly that. So a special, special weekend for all of those pitchers that we had out there, but kind of sharing those stories. Um, another Tennessee highlight was KT. Holy cow. I don't Which think we, anyone... we definitely talked about on the first. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And I, I talked about him kind of with you before, you know, he's from Lewisburg, uh, Tennessee and my papa side of the family was from Lewisburg small Tennessee town so he's a Tennessee boy through and through and you know, he's waited it out and kind of worked for his time he has now and so I tweeted out a presser in the fall where you know coach V mentioned him and he was one of the most consistent in the offseason scrimmages and he's showing that now and gosh I don't know how we can talk about Tennessee baseball without talking about Billy Amick, who, of course, we love to see him have success coming in um, as a transfer and just following his path here at Tennessee, um, being a student athlete. But he's he's one of those good guys. You know, we do a reading program in the Knoxville area, and he was one of the first to volunteer to go read to the classrooms um, for it. But, I mean, these guys are not perfect by any means at all, ever, but he's a genuine guy and that is so humble that yeah no I, I I was excited about Billy Amick and we obviously had him on this show but it says a lot about Tennessee's program overall because he left the Clemson program it's not like he wasn't having trouble getting on the field like he was their starter he was their dude and he left there for Tennessee because he felt like he had a better opportunity to win a national championship and so you see Clemson ranked in the top 15 in everybody's poll, but yet he left for Tennessee. And so that tells you what they got going, what Tony V and that team has, because he wanted to be a part of that lineup that he felt like could win a championship. And so you see that he makes an immediate impact. And then guys like we were talking about with Terrace who've waited their time, right? You know, and that's been the constant thing in Tennessee. Very rarely are you going to come in, even if you're a star freshman and be a starter, you're going to have to wait a year or two. Sometimes guys, even three, like with a Trey Lipscomb. So um, that's just how deep their talent is. And so it's good to see a guy like KT be able to, to put his stamp. And then a guy like Billy who came in. And then of course the pitchers that you had highlighted before making everything that, you know, we had talked about coming in, you know, be what we knew to be true. But you messaged me after the Oklahoma game, which would come Saturday and said, okay, this team is for real. And based upon how they did overall all weekend, it wasn't a fluke that they beat Tennessee, um, obviously beating Oregon as well. So, um, you know, talk about, even though we're more so talking about Tennessee, give Oklahoma their due. Talk about, you know, how good a team they look like. Yeah. So I was there to do two things. Um, I, I was wearing two different hats, but the first one was skill show and imperfect game. And so we were showing, you know, interviews, we're interviewing the guys on the teams, all, all the teams, we had their old perfect game footage from high school, like when they were young, young guys first, like starting out in their recruiting process. And so we clipped those videos together and we got their live reactions to seeing them. So we airdropped them the video. We didn't tell them, I didn't tell them what they were about to get on their phone. Probably were a little scared, but I <laughs> airdropped them the video and the first thing they see is like their 12 year old self, you know, hi, I'm so-and-so and I'm a left-handed pitcher and, you know, they're recruiting little reel that they did. And it was such a good like time for them just kind of reflect and see, you know, this is where they were. And, you know, the interviews were great, but I also was running some of the Cape Cod socials and, you know, sharing some of those guys coming out to the league and, um, that's kind of where, you know, I, I got to get all those videos and stuff. And I don't, didn't really mention it enough last time, how unique that summer league is to college baseball. So. Well, um, in your defense, I don't think I gave you enough time. We were, we were <laughs> on a time crunch. So, you know, I, I cut it short and that's why I told you I was going to give you an opportunity to break into that today. And, you know, we'll, as soon as we get done breaking down the weekend, I want to give you the floor to really, you know, talk about that because, um, you know, hearing you talk about it clearly you're passionate about it and i love it and that's you know i told daniel i said we got an invite to go check out the cape and i said i feel like um now will be the best time because with ellie out there and she's gonna be connected she'll be able to show us the ropes as guys who 
will be uh, new to it and not really know too much. And you'll be able to tell us, uh, you know, the ins and outs, the players that are must watch, all that good stuff. Because um, from what I've heard talking to the players, there's a lot to navigate out there, you know. Um, you got different teams all over the place, and you got, got to pick and choose who might be the, the go-to. But um, going Go back, back to the Oklahoma thing, though, they're coming to the SEC, and they're going to fit in very nicely. I mean, their fans were amazing. They were nice. I love getting to kind of share their team. But – there were some guys out there, you know, you got Jackson Wills who hit the walk off to win. Um, I mean, they're pretty stacked. Even in the pitching room as a freshman, um, they had a lot of different guys. Another one, Jason Walk, he was a pinch hitter um, in there for a few innings. He also played a little bit of left field. He and I actually went to middle school together. Completely forgot that he was even, you know, on Oklahoma's team. And I'm, walking by and I, he's like Ellie and I'm like oh my gosh <laughs> you know on the side there so it was really cool to kind of see that but I got to know that team a little bit more Malachi Witherspoon uh, and Kyson Witherspoon the two brothers uh, they're twins you know both pitchers they both came in they're coming to the Cape um, and they were they were something special but another one you know Oregon I mean, hey, I was really wasn't expecting that from Oregon, but you know, four teams finished two and one on um, the weekend, and says they, they got the right group together. Yeah, oh yeah, they do, and they're clicking very well fast this early on in the season. Um, but they had to go to run differential to get a champion, and that that kind of tells you those teams are all talented and competitive. Yeah, and you go to, and you go to extra innings with the Tennessee Oklahoma game and, and told you, and it was, it was great pitching. You know, it's one of those things you see that Tennessee loses on a Saturday and you're like, Oh man, we had Drew Beam going, but then you look and you see that, you know, Drew only gave up one run over five and two thirds and, and he did his thing. And then you talked about Marcus Phillips and Stamos and they came in and it was just unfortunately a bad outing for Aaron Combs which you'd rather get those out the way earlier than later. Um, I will say the one highlight, um, a shameless plug, but in off the bench guest, Dylan Dryling hit an absolute rocket um, out of the park. So, um, you know, shout out to the young guy who's another guy getting his opportunities, right? Like KT to to really show that he's going to be cemented in that lineup. But it, it was just a tough day for the lineup and a tough day for Combs. But, you know, they shook that off, right? And, you know, you got your Sunday game and – and they take care of business against Baylor, and they do find those bats scoring 11 runs. Um, you know, talk about that game, you know, when the team opens it up, puts up 11 runs, just how much fun that was to to watch them, you know, get the bats rolling. Yeah, and early on, Baylor was doing really well, and they kind of stayed in there for a little bit, but, you know, it just opened up. I think they were running out of pitchers, and pitch counts were starting to get there, but it was kind of – I mean, the Tennessee bats just really started heating up and they came in clutch big time because, you know, that just kind of shows you like how, how baseball works though. <laughs> you know? And it wasn't, and it wasn't, and I'm looking at this Ellie, just to, to remind myself, it wasn't like it was one guy. So you, you see that Terrace hit the homer and then you see Amick tripled. And then you see Peebles with the sack fly. You see Christian Moore with the RBI double. You see Amick homered, you know, said dryling with the RBI single. Everybody's, getting in this right it wasn't like one guy just you know went off it, it's it's everybody um performed and was adding in rbis and collectively and that's why we said coming into this tennessee has one of the best lineups in the country hands down top to bottom it could be your one guy it could be your nine guy and tony v has to feel really good about that yeah i mean you can be up four innings in baseball and lose in the last two and it really comes down to how your lineup is and how those guys are, how consistent you can be going up to bat every again, you know, every bat that you're having a pitcher that's throwing a 96 slider or, you know, cause everybody has pitchers. Um, they do. I mean, that in today's day and age, you have a pitcher that's going to throw a 90 plus mile, mile an hour fastball and, you know, have a good sinker, have a good slider. You know, you can have that in college baseball now you look at any D1 program that's doing well and it's successful, it doesn't matter the conference, they're there. And so, you know, that's kind of what we saw this weekend too with, you know, all the upsets, Vandy getting beat, um, Arkansas. I mean, yeah, just I mean, well, if you go to last night, even get outside the weekend, obviously, you know, Wake Forest taking a loss, like it's it's going to happen. Um, I'm, I'm low-key mad about that one. 
<laughs> I'm mad about that one. I was like, are you kidding me? I, yeah. I'm not because they I know those guys really well. And um, Nick Kurtz, who's the captain of that team, and, and my boy, he's going to use that as a teaching moment for those guys to tell them to humble themselves and that they don't walk on water. Um, so uh, I mean, Coach Walt will do that. And so it, it, they they needed that. I think everybody can use that early punch in the mouth. It's always, well, Tony V, I know, talks about using those moments, right? And I'm sure, obviously, you know, they didn't get they didn't get beat by a crap team, right? They got beat by Oklahoma. But nonetheless, hey, you know, we, we held them to one run through nine innings and we didn't we didn't perform at the plate and we got to be better than that. And so you take that as a teaching moment, but, you know, and then they go into, uh, to the midweek and uh, I got to bring up, you know, just the pitching performance. Cause I'll be honest with you. I didn't even realize Hunley's little brother was on the team. Um, Sean is a two-time guest of the show. One of our very first ball balls and, and my good, good buddy. And to see Austin Hunley come in and have the performance he did, um, Man, you love to see the orange going through the bloodline, right? One Hunley to another. It was a it was a big surprise, honestly, because to see him be so successful, he was poised on the mound. I feel like, and I, that's very hard for someone that's coming in like that. But I mean, it's it's obviously runs in the family there. But um, you know, another thing that just come to mind: one team that you know we've seen recently, kind of start off really well was South Carolina mm -hmm. they had an opening weekend for sure I mean a no hitter double digit scoring game and they're back to back to back all week and into the weekend but those are some of the teams I was kind of on the side watching well the, the South Carolina thing the beautiful part about it is right because their bats were going Ellie none of yeah. those guys like so Roman only had to throw a couple innings which he's coming back off timing John um you know so Coach Kingston didn't have to like over um extend his pitching staff, um, threw them all a couple innings because they were putting up, you know, double digit runs and not extend them out. When you look at the things like the no hit, but South Carolina, they didn't play anybody great. But the reality is a lot of other teams didn't play great teams. Like you mentioned, Arkansas playing a James Madison and lost. South Carolina took care of business with the team the way you're supposed to when you're a great team. And and that's the reality. And I, I think like you're talking about Vandy, but like, you know, Kentucky looked pretty good. The SEC is going to be what it always is. It's an absolute gauntlet, top to bottom. I don't think any team outside of maybe Missouri has big questions. Georgia looked great. And I'm going to tell you, you know, Charlie Condon is my was my pick coming into the season to win SEC Player of the Year. Uh, all my LSU brethren were like, how are you not going to pick Tommy White? I was like, Charlie Condon is a dog, literally. And he has been, and he's very quiet and he's a humble guy and you know you won't hear much from him on social media he just kind of keeps to himself and that's honestly I know a lot of those Georgia guys just from you know growing up with them and you know some of them went to my high school um one of the first interviews I actually ever did was with Colin Caldwell one of their pitchers and him and my brother grew up he they were like best buddies he's one of my big brothers but you know, prom, homecoming, whatever it was, we, always at their house, always at our house. And so seeing them having success, because that George State team is that they've always kind of had a little bit of trouble. They usually played them later into the season and coming off of a big SEC weekend. But they always, you know, it's it's always a little close there, um, but they're four and oh going in. And so and those guys are, you know, gone through a coaching change. They've They've been there through the summer, hard times, and it's, you know, now they're kind of getting their groove together. And that's also Charlie's a Cape guy as well. Um, but, you know, another thing about South Carolina is they also got a lot of transfers in Parker Nolan, um, a Vandy guy, you know, they have Ethan Petrie returning again. You got Messina so, who's arguably, uh, you know, Peebles is probably the best guy who gives them, um, you know, a run at, at the top catcher. And so you have him and then you had um, Gavin Casas who came over from, from Vandy the year before, which is part of the Paul Parker Nolan thing. They're, they're boys. And so, yeah, no, they're absolutely stacked. So I actually predicted Ellie close. I actually they're predicted I'm going to the Tennessee South Carolina series, um, the final series of the year. I actually have predicted that the winner of that series wins the East. Yeah. I mean, I'll be there for that for sure. So I will see you, but I, I don't want to speak too soon because the SEC tournament 
is going to be it's going to be intense and it's going to always speak soon i know what i feel tennessee is going to be there with south carolina and then the winner and the sec tournament the thing about it is winning it has always been a bad thing ellie yeah i thought that i thought that last year as well you know i thought tennessee was going to go into the tournament and just dominate and it turned out you know turned out completely different games every single day you had to play game by game and it was I mean a lot of those were three to four games a day and then by the end of the week you're playing you know so anyways but if you you look at the last three years Ellie so Mississippi State got run ruled out of the tournament and they would win the national championship Ole Miss was one and done and would end up winning the national championship and then LSU only won one and then lost back to back, and they would win that championship. So the SEC tournament winning it, I promise, doesn't mean anything. Arkansas's won it multiple times and recently and lost in the yeah. tournament. Like it's always, it's a curse. It's honestly a curse. You're good to just if you're if you're set to go to the postseason, unless you have to win to get in type of deal, you're better just saving your arms and resting and getting ready for the postseason. Throw whoever you know, and um, you try to win games, but you know don't don't risk everything you have putting it all out there to win an sec title right yeah and you can you can lose games now too and you know still be able to recover but that's kind of why i love baseball is you know is the pad like i mentioned earlier the pageantry of it you can lose right now it honestly deserves it because you know it's just as good as football basketball all those other sports but people really kind of get a network going and you know, we need more network coverage of college baseball, in my opinion. Yeah, um, absolutely. Fans that are there, and it might be slow, it might be long. You might have a three-hour game like Texas Tech in the tournament, and <laughs> it might be, you know, exhausting, but we really need that coverage there because you can lose the games now, but you need to win later on. And it starts to, you know, the importance of it comes, you know, the story of the season, you might, it's there for the fans, so... Yeah, so it's, let me ask you one more question, and then we'll get into the Cape. Um, in regards to um, today's midweek action, you got Matthew Dallas on the mound. You know, um, for those who maybe don't know, tell us about uh, this kid and what we expect to see tonight. Yeah, I really don't know a lot about um, him. I know, you know, he came in as a highly recruited freshman, um, and he, we kind of got to see a little bit of him in the tournament this weekend. But um, so far, I mean, I think he throws pretty fast. You know, he's got had some little bit of arm soreness coming in into the season um, just from, you know, being in – he was in a lot of different showcases. I don't know really um, how that works. But, you know, Tony came in, developed him well. I think he's been in the workout with Q a lot, um, just really working on strengthening that arm. And there's just so many good pitchers in that Tennessee bullpen that, you know, you can't – you can't say just one guy is, you know, the set guy, but I think it's, I think he's going to have a pretty great year. It's going to be exciting to see what he can do and, um, you know, maybe help out Tennessee in a few innings whenever, you know, he gets called in, but you know, the depth on that, that pitching chart is, I mean, and there's more than we, I want to say there's more than we've ever seen, honestly, because, you know, we've had a lot of good guys, but Hunter high, um, I mean, there's other guys there too that can really step in and and you know they might. I don't know. I mean, they you might. have the king of swag on your team, and Xander Seacrest. I mean, oh, that's all you need at the end of the day. It's like Xander Seacrest. Um, <laughs> I think who was it? A Rangers player said it, but like, like you've got to the batter's got to be a little scared of you. I forget the exact quote, but that's exactly that's all I see is Xander Seacrest when I hear that is like he really does psych out those <laughs> batters coming up to play. Yeah, you sent me that video and I was like, you gotta, you gotta put that up there. That's the good content that college baseball fans want to see. Um, because it's not like he said it in a truly arrogant way. He was clearly being fun and funny. And yeah. so that gives the lighthearted side of a pitcher off the mound. Yeah, and Paige. Um, the girl that asked the question, you know, she was, it was also just a funny, like joking moment for her. Um, it just kind of happened. And it was honestly like the biggest Tom Cruise moment. I think <laughs> that could have happened, but you know, he just has that like calm collected, but that top gun right. kind of to it. No doubt. So let's get into I this Kate thing. I know it's your baby and you've been wanting to talk about it. Um, you 
message me with this excitement. You see this guy, you see this guy. Um, like we talk about, they're not just Vols players, but this guy's committed, this guy's committed. Um, you're really excited about the amount of talent that's going to be playing in the Kate this summer. So talk about that. Yeah, so we have a very large group, um, you know, a group text right now that's kind of going through and we're all starting to get everything ready for it. But this past weekend, um, Oregon had about five guys. Oklahoma had about five. Tennessee has all pitchers um, and a catcher. So just fun to kind of watch them start the season and then knowing where they'll be. Um, but we saw, you know, Dylan Carey at Nebraska, um, a shortstop. He had an incredible game. Um, you know, what we're trying to kind of do is at the Cape is just get the fan base excited and, you know, reach out to the different colleges and show them, you know, this will be them and kind of their spring training that they'll be doing in a way um, coming into the Cape. So, and kind of what the Cape is and what it does. Um, it's almost like a, almost like a fraternity. I really don't want to say that, but for people who don't are as familiar with it, it's almost like a fraternity. And these teams have been around, you go back, you know, into the history of it. And we just had the hundredth year of Cape Cod baseball. And it's, I mean, that kind of tells you, the history of the sport and the game and you know the location of it especially because it's a small small island it's about you can get from one point to another in about 40 minutes um tops so <laughs> it's really not some like spread out and it's all like a beach town um you know you got martha's vineyard up there you've got all of that so you know it's very and all it is is college baseball in the summer that's yeah. it you know that's really and I feel like that was the part you talked about the movie I think that's the part that's actually accurate but that's the part that's I think I know that movie is parts of it are unrealistic but I think that's the part of the movie they get right about it being everything up there during the summer that's what people are up there to do that's what everybody's there watching on a night in night out basis yeah I hope it's um Parts of that movie, you're right, but I hope parts of it are a little bit <laughs> wrong and stretched out there. <laughs> but just um, being, you know, being from the Coastal Plain League and kind of last summer, those small towns, I mean, are very, they really kind of get involved in, you know, the mom and pop shops and the little like lobster restaurant down the street that are providing post game meals and, you know, you know, or the shrimp shop, whatever it may be. Um, yeah. And I like, like that the guys get to know each other. We've we've had so many guys who have been connected through the Cape, like you said, from various different teams. Um, they spend a summer together and, you know, a summer together, a brotherhood that can be formed is one that they may carry for the rest of their life. So um, just a bigger than the game thing because you, you make good friends there. Yeah, and I talked to, you know, Colin Codwell and um, who pitches for Georgia and he played – and Charlie Condon, you know, I talked with them a little bit, um, who played for, um, I think it was Bourne. Yeah. He played for Bourne. Bourne Braves. And, yeah. So they were all telling me and, you know, what I can expect and how it's like a fraternity almost like you're just around it all day long. And they're able to, you know, even though they're going to be at different schools in the season, you know, they might be getting drafted to different teams that it's like MLB pre MLB almost, you know, preparing you you might be on a small minor league team together you never know mm. so it's really cool to see those guys grow through but going back to some of the guys that we had this weekend um again Oregon Jeffrey Hurd outfielder had an incredible game I think he was the player of the game on the second day uh, for Oregon really really good at bats um Another one was Drew Smith. He was a third baseman. Um, he'll be playing for the Braves this summer in Bourne. Uh, you got Grayson Grinzel, really big pitcher. He came out as a starter. Um, but some of these teams, like, they don't really want their rosters out there yet. So I'm not going to say the names of them, but I'm just saying there were some, you know, they're going to be at the Cape this summer and to develop their skills. And the rosters officially get dropped. It's – when it does, it's going to be a big, big event. Like we, we need to start kind of paying attention to that a little bit more, but um, yeah, just, I'm, that's kind of what I'm doing all spring and, you know, going to different places and covering different teams where we have these guys 
um, you know, and I'm one of a huge group that are a part of this, but they're all doing a lot of coverage behind the scenes and getting everything ready for it. And, you know, writers. So I am I am curious about something that I thought about when you timeline this thing, Ellie, being someone that covers Tennessee baseball, if Tennessee goes back to Omaha and the Cape has already started, what does that look like for you? Because I highly doubt you're missing Omaha, but you have this commitment to the Cape. So I'm interested to know how that, that plays out for you. If that happens. I will definitely be in the Cape um, because I'm already on contract and I've already said yes to it. Um, I can always, you know, cheer from afar and watch it. Oh um, no, that's not the same. You're going to have to like make flights every day. Yeah. Maybe they'll let me like fly out and come back. I don't know. Or at least if they make the championship, they're like, look, okay, I need these three days off. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta go for the championship. Yeah. And one of the things that was fun was that, you know, the Tennessee fans, I kind of got to know them a little bit before, you know, covering and starting. But, you know, this weekend, they really jumped in and traveled, you know, and everyone talks about their fan base traveling the most and, you know, who gets where. But Tennessee Twitter was on fire. I mean, and I love that you know, that they were supporting and that they were, you know, showing a lot of love to these guys all weekend because, you know, for me, being an undergrad here and, you know, just kind of getting my feet into the water, yes, that's hard um, to cover equally for each team because I am a student and, you know, I do have a lot of different hats and a lot of different things that I work for, but, you know, I always love my school and getting to cover them but it's it's and sharing that for the fans that was really exciting it's always hard though it definitely is i've i've had a few you know i have a lot of friends a lot of different schools and i support them and love them but while i'm covering all these guys and all these different schools you know i'm growing up covering them and so since i was little and just kind of little as in high school but (laughs) i got you you know just kind of getting to see that well, the first time you're on, like I talked about, we rushed. And so we didn't get a chance to play a game called This or That that we do with every guest. And you said on your show, you don't get to play. You know, you as a producer, you don't get that opportunity. So I uh, I still have. I'm always like sitting in the background because, you know, I'm giving the this or that questions to them and I'm seeing them beforehand and I'm listening to their answers. And I just like so badly want to jump in and be like, as a producer, I have to sit there and make sure, you know, that everything's good and it comes out right and it's the way that you know it flows right but in the back I'm like sitting there I'm like I want I just one time want to answer my question (laughs) well you're going to get to answer these today and this or that is always brought to you by Chinook say cedary sorry butchered that eight flavors mild to wild the best in the game the plug today is Jameson 19 if you want to support Jameson Brock and bro from Tennessee softball or Beam 32, Drew Beam from Ball Baseball. But it's very simple. You know how the game works. I give you two options. You choose one or the other. Can't say both. Can't say neither. You down? I'm ready. All right. We start easy. Chicken or beef tacos? Beef tacos. Beef or steak tacos? Steak tacos. All day. It's always an easy winner. Do you like them hard or soft? Uh, it really depends. Soft if it's steak and then hard if it's beef. Correct. Very good. You're welcome to dinner at my house anytime. <laughs> um, bar or liquid soap? Liquid soap. Mm. Come on. You, you ladies scrub your face with bar soap. You need bar soap. It's essential. I mean, I have bar soap in my shower, but I don't really use it. I got to go like, it's like the scrub liquid just like a little piece of it but so let me tell you why this became a question and i and i got carlin with it yesterday i told her did you know that liquid soap only cleans 50 percent of your hands and they always buy it and sure enough she took it and she goes really and i was like no but you you believed it just like everybody i've gotten guys girls it doesn't matter and I did that jokingly, and we just kind of now we have fun with this question. But it, it started because I use bar soap, Daniel uses uh, liquid soap, and so we argued over. It, and so now it's became a thing, and it's fun. So in the kitchen, I have bar soap. In my bathroom, I have liquid soap, just there for the scrub. just for the scrub. 
Gotcha. All right, this is my favorite of the this or that questions because it's Tennessee specific. All right, so when it comes to baseball, do you like the gray uniforms or the black uniforms? I'll have to go with black ones. All right, here's the real challenge, though. The dark mode black uniforms of baseball or the summit blue of softball? Summit blue of softball any day without, <laughs> without a question. I love those girls, and those uniforms are gorgeous. They're actually going to Cali. Um, they leave Friday. They have all – so on their episodes, I've asked them if they would rather have their whole uniform kit that has all the rest of the uniforms, the pen stripes, the white, all that, or just the Summit Blues. Um, and they said they would be good with just the Summit Blues. Like, they would play with them every game is good. Because <laughs> that's the legacy with Pat Summit. I mean, you can't. Right. They tell a story more than just being awesome looking on top of that. Exactly. It has history behind it. It has tradition. And you but can't it's... be a lady ball without wearing the Summit Blue. Like, it's. It's period. We talk about Tennessee being a everything school. Their uniforms are everything. So, like, go back to football two years ago. I was at the Tennessee at LSU game, and the gray edition uniforms they wore that year and kicked our A in, they looked <laughs> awesome doing it. And they – so whether you're talking about football, baseball, basketball, like the uniform kit of Tennessee and their alternate uh, jerseys are just awesome. And shout out to the photographers too and the graphics people that actually like before the games will do like the close up and the nitty gritty details of it um, and mm -hmm. putting those on socials because I always think that's, I always think that's so neat because you know, you don't really see, you see like the cool hype videos with the uniform stuff like that, but just like the clean classic showing each little part of the uniform that not many fans would recognize or notice. I always think that's really cool. Yeah, no doubt. So this next question, let me preface it by saying there's no good option. It's the fun of the question. Would you rather be lost in a jungle at night or lost in a, tr or excuse me, trapped in a haunted house? Mm, definitely lost in a jungle at night because I feel like I could, I can navigate my way around there. But haunted house, no. Mike the tiger is not caged in that jungle, Ellie. Well, you know, I'll be fine. I, I'm not scared of it. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll make a way. I'm not scared of animals. I am scared of a clown or a demonic figure running at me. And uh, -uh I do not. All right. So let me switch it to our old question. My favorite with old Blake Burke, since you said you're not afraid of animals. So would you rather have to escape from a grizzly bear or a tiger? Grizzly bear. He said he'd play dead. I told him I don't know if that works or not. <laughs> I mean... If you run away from a bear, then... And it runs 35 miles an hour, that big thing. Yeah, I mean, they're pretty fast, but a tiger is a lot smarter. And it's a crazy, aggressive animal. The agility on it, everything. So I feel like I could maneuver around the bear a little bit. No doubt. All right, private yacht or private jet? Oh, yacht. I'm going to have to go yacht, without uh, a doubt. I'm a water know, person, so I'm with you. Private jet, you can go anywhere, cool, but, like, you know, you can fly on a plane anywhere, too. But I don't know, like, what, like, having a yacht is. That would be. All right, so I got to reformat this question because you're not on the field. So let's go. It's usually $10 million or win a national championship. And shout out to Carlin for being honest and saying money because – I think she's maybe like the fifth person in nine seasons to actually save money. And she said, I hope nobody's mad at me. Uh, but I'll give you um, I won championships. I would say money too. <laughs> I'll give you a million dollars or cover a baseball and football national championship. A million dollars. I've Even already if you get to cover through the full thing. I've already got to cover a national football championship, and I love sports. Well, but I'm talking about Tennessee winning it. You cover I, Tennessee winning. That's different. I, you know mm. what? I can also cover it from the stands if I wanted to. <laughs> but I, I, with my money, I'm able to, I can also buy a suite and cover it from the suite. <laughs> um, I can also... Well, you hear that? You hear that, Vol Faithful? She's not willing to give up her money so y'all can have titles. Mm. Mm -mm. Well, you know, I like, I like my money. You know, I played a sport, 
my whole life and won nine national championships and it was amazing but you know I also don't have control over the game you know those guys and those girls that are out there competing and working hard all year they're the ones that are ultimately it's going to come down to that and God's choice um and kind of he already knew before it happened anyways so I've gotten to cover just watching it kind of play out too that's great but you know I work for I work for money and I work for the love of the game. So <laughs> there you go. Well, that is the end of the game. And let me segue to telling you, I just saw on my phone the uh, Vols video for today and Blake Burke and the home sweet home thing. And so I have now just got this gut feeling that Blake Burke's going to hit one 450 feet. So stay tuned. He's, he's coming on the right track right now. And he's, you know, he did well. He had a lot of good at bats this past weekend, but he's going to be on a Riley Green show this weekend. So I'm excited for that. I can finally officially say that out loud. <laughs> but I texted, like, I will never stop saying it now. But I texted the group chat last night and was like, who wants to go on, you know, read to the kids at the elementary school um, in Knoxville and him and Billy Amick and Hunter Inslee were immediately were like, I want to go. Let's well, do it. I want to go. So I'm excited to see that. All right. Well, let's go ahead and give you a chance to plug where they can find you. Um, obviously, social media and then as well as the YouTube um, if they didn't happen to tune in last episode and get that. So where can they find you at? Yeah. So uh, for Tennessee coverage, it's my Twitter, Ellie underscore May underscore May is with an M-A-I. Not many people. It's a it's named after my great grandmother. It's a family name. Um, but that's my Twitter, same for Instagram. Um, and then for, you know, when I cover Tennessee, I'm mainly posting for the Players Lounge, um, the TPL Tennessee, all one word. Um, they are amazing. And that's where our podcasts come out. So, you know, it's a media platform and it's great for Tennessee sports. And it gives these athletes a chance to kind of have their own platform and share their experiences. And that's really, you know, and be their own person and share their voice to people so and who they are but yeah that's really you know and then the cape league cape cod mm -hmm. baseball it's really easy to find but my interviews and from this past weekend will be on skill show and perfect game um so that'll be exciting y'all can kind of see hunter insley we got his old film we got simo's old film um some of those oklahoma guys we got about two from each team, so. There you Text go. Well, y'all check it out, and, you know, we're going to bring Ellie back, I assume, you know, when SEC play gets started here in, you know, three or four weeks and, and see where every team is at from where we're talking about them now. You know, obviously they'll have gotten their feet wet, and like I said, dip into SEC play. Maybe after that first series um, would be a good time to bring you back, but – um enough to bench we thank you for your coming and bringing your knowledge uh of what you get to see obviously if you follow the pictures and videos i sent from ellie you see that she is sitting right there or standing right there um with the best seat in the house so uh, i feel like your viewpoint is a good one so thank you again for coming on the show very fortunate that stadium was amazing yeah wow. i i walked around toward all of it and it was awesome <laughs> Well, that's Ellie Williamson, everybody. If you like hearing her story or you just like hearing us Average Joes talk X's and O's, please like and share the podcast on Facebook. We treat us on Twitter. I can't talk. I just started that. Anyway, share, you know, whatever. Um, Apple, Spotify, Anchor, all that good stuff. The ratings, feedback is welcome. We'll see everybody back Monday night. Guess what, Ellie? It's time to go to the powerhouse. We got Ethan Fry from LSU Baseball. But remember, in the in the meantime, strong body, sharp minds, grit and God all the time. We're out. I tried I tried for